I do that? There you go. Uh, where's the record button? Record to the cloud. Okay, we are in, we're live. We're like three minutes late, you know, because we were gabbing. But uh, <laughs> here we are tonight, a little bit later, because sometimes when life puts on a little bit of a roller coaster, you just roll with the with the ride, the way that the, the waves, I don't know where I'm going with that, whatever. I'm like super busy. So here I am <laughs> late <laughs> and thank God Renee is super flexible and was like, it's fine. We'll can go later. I was like, thank you because I, I have a hard time sticking to a schedule. Anyways, it makes life fun and exciting. So we're going to talk to you today about eating with the seasons. I know that sounds kind of self-explanatory, but we're going to make it fun and I'm going to let Renee start because I always start and I do a lot of the talking. So I'm going to let her take it away today and <laughs> yeah. pipe, pipe well, in when I, when I feel like it. I know it's funny because I am very concise and not concise, but very to the point. And then <laughs> we, we compliment each other because I'm like, I, all right, here's why. <laughs> I think so. Actually, I was having a conversation Side note here. I was having a conversation with another woman I'm working on a project with. And, and she was like, I seem to be drawn to people like you and uh, like complete opposites. And I was like, yeah, I said, well, Renee, the other woman that I'm working with, like we're opposites, but it works well. But I was saying to her, I'm like, you know, I have never worked with anyone who has more energy than me or that is more than I am. I don't know how to describe it. So that's interesting. All of the partners, all of the people that I migrate to probably because I'm searching for some, even my partner, you know, I like, that's why he's attracted to me. He's like, cause you're so full of energy. And I'm like, oh, but you're so grounded. So it really, it really works together. Eh? It's like professionally, uh, personally, even some of my kids, I don't know. I don't know if they'll have more energy. Well, I'm one of them, my, I do have a spitfire uh, anyways. All right, enough All right. of that. But okay, we are complimenting each other very well. I am in my upstairs office, aka my dining room, um, because uh, I've been using my computer back and forth all over the place. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to leave it at the dining room table. We're going to do this live. And next week, I will be back in my office. I think I'm going to rearrange that. All right. Stop talking. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Eating with well, the seasons. I don't have a lot to say about eating with the seasons, but it does have benefits. It really does. I mean, um, and, and we can talk about why it's, you know, beneficial to eat foods in season, but then we can also talk a little bit about eating locally, which, which kind of pairs nicely with this. So, you know, the number one reason why it's really good to eat with the season is it's more nutritious that way. I mean, if you think about it, um, if, if you ever, you know, grow a garden and you eat and you pick stuff that are not fully ripe or whatever, and it's like, they're just not there, they're not ready yet. But if you can get the foods that are, you know, able to ripen on the vine and, you know, from your local farmer's market, they, don't they just taste so much better? I mean, I love tomatoes, summer tomatoes. Like I don't eat tomatoes much through the winter because they're gross. And I buy they canned strawberries. Tomatoes. Yes. Well, yeah, they have that white center. It's like when they have the white center, they have no taste. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so, um, so they are, they have more nutrients, you know, because they're picked when they're fully developed and they're picked at the peak of the season and they just contain higher nutrients that way. And another thing, it's actually better for the environment because when food is obtained and this is going to, we're going to talk a little about local, like, in, you know, when you get your food locally, it's less likely to be subjected to pesticides and herbicides and fungicides. And what happens with these, when somebody has to use those, when a farmer has to use those, they deplete the soil and can contaminate the water and cause health issues. So, you know, it's just better for the environment. And it, speaking locally again, it supports your local farmers because, you know, local produce equals less transportation, uh, less forced ripening, which again, equates to not as good and less refrigeration and fewer chemicals. And I already mentioned it tastes better, right? So, 
you know, think about when you have to pick your produce and then ship it globally and out of season, you know, uh, farmers will have to use the post-harvest treatments to control the ripening and the spoilage and the quality. And that affects the taste and the quality of the produce. And then, you know, last but not least, it's actually more affordable that way, right? It's all about supply and demand. So when a crop is abundant locally, it's going to cost less. So, you know, that's, it's just, it's just so much better. <laughs> it tastes better. It's cheaper. Well, it's you know, better and for you too, right? Because you're getting all of the vitamin D, you're getting the, you know, our, we talked about how our light and expansive foods grow up. And so when you're, I'm talking like spring and summer, right? When you're actually eating the foods in season or like our squash and we go into like our fall. Oh God, I love September. It's my favorite season, September, October. And then you can go more into like your hearty meals. It always reminds everything I can relate back to fitness. Okay. I don't know why, <laughs> but like eating with the seasons, totally, you know, when you're on, if you're eating a clean eating diet and it's spring and summer, kind of where we are right now, like starting with the cleanse, what we're doing, you know, we're in it, in it to win it right now. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect time because now like you want salads, you know, now you want to start eating like the soups and the salads and the lighter soups, not like creamy or potato or heavy soups. Like you want like broccoli soup or tomato soup, not that that's on the cleanse, but um, the butternut squash soup or just the vegetable soup, chicken noodle soup. You want to have things that are all light and fluffy and um, light in your belly. And then moving into summer, you have more of your vegetables and all of your, you know, in, in season fruits. And that is a really good time to start picking and then freezing. So if you have the chance to go to uh, what you pick, you know, like the strawberry yeah. you pick or the mm -hmm. raspberry you pick and then freeze everything, then that works really well for putting them into your smoothies or shakes later. And then it always reminds me as we kind of walk into like the fall and winter where we do more like our squash, you know, then you get into the chilies and the stews and um, more of your heavier cream soups and the squashes. I can't say squash pumpkins, you, you know, you really like your soups. <laughs> I do. Uh, you know what? I am not a big soup eater, but uh, when I am like hardcore meal planning, I prefer to do homemade soups. I have one kid that will eat the soup with me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I love, I love, uh, Greek salad. That's my favorite. And I like the, I like to have like spinach and leafy salads with fresh strawberries and raspberries and like almond slivers, and then just the balsamic vinegar. Those are like my favorite go-tos, but I don't, yeah, I don't want to eat that in the winter, you know? So I do tend to lean more towards like the heavier squashes or stir fries. I mean, I like to make a lot of stir fries and I do a lot of stir fries year round, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and that you mentioned freezing, that's another thing too, is if, you know, if you can't find things locally, um, it's so much, you know, you can buy the frozen and cause at least when they're frozen, they are picked at their peak of ripeness, but again, you're paying for the transportation costs and they still have to, you know, do some things to get them to that point. So there's a bit of processing involved and who knows what they're using to get them into the state where they get into the bags and whatever, you know, whatever you're buying. So, you know, it really is, it's just really nice to be able to go to your local farmer's market and just, um, and just buy and you know what, you know what else it does is it, it contributes to the local economy as well. So For sure. And know, another step um, up would be starting a garden yourself, you know, and growing yeah. your food. I did that the last two years and um, learning, like you have to rotate your food. So wherever you did your peas one year, do your, do them somewhere else, like the next year and same with your zucchini. Um, it's funny because uh, we had some leftover wood when we built our deck. And so my husband made me this, this garden bed, which looks like a coffin. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, honey. <laughs> but it was like fresh soil. And I was like, well, I'll just plant my zucchinis in there because I did them in the, the ground. And so this was the new one and it was raised. So I thought, oh, I'll put my, oh my God. I, <laughs> I had so much zucchini last summer. I still have zucchini frozen in my freezer. And then I started just giving it away. 
and it was like giant zucchini. So I can give you tips on how to grow zucchini, use fresh soil, <laughs> but yeah. I'm always trying different vegetables um, just to see what I can grow. I have some friends who their whole front lawn, they've done a whole bunch of raised beds and they grow everything everything. And then they will dry it and um, like grind it up. So they've got like beet powder, they have pickled beets, they have, you know, uh, their frozen zucchini, they have, um, oh my gosh, they, they do everything. They make like almond milk and oat milk from like squeezing the almonds and everything, but they do a lot of canned goods and a lot of freezing and even um, beet greens. And then their, uh, their spinach, I was like, well, you have so much, like, what do you do with it? And they said, well, they cook it and then they'll freeze it. And then they pop it into their smoothies in the winter. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, uh, it's growing locally and naturally. And while we're on eating for the seasons, I've probably mentioned this before, but I want to mention it again, honey. So having local honey, wherever you live, the best type of honey to have is local honey, unpasteurized local honey. Um, because your local bees are making it and it will help to reduce allergies. And it is considered a nutritious food. Yes, it's sugar. Yes, it's a sweetener, but it actually has so many health benefits for you. And then cinnamon, mixing honey and cinnamon is actually like a superfood. I just need to throw that out there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I, I don't use honey that often, but when I do have it, it's the local, but it's funny because it's so hard to work with sometimes because it gets hard, not hard, but it's not liquid. It's not like the honeybee honey that you get in the grocery store with the little bear and you just squeeze yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it's like you're digging in. Yeah. It's almost like peanut butter. Like it kind of crystallizes. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's, it is really, mm, it is really good. And, and you know what, it's, it's nice too, because, you know, if you're able to, and this is what I look forward to in the spring and summer is that the local farmers markets, right because they, you know, you can go, you interact with the community, you get to talk to the people that work at the farms and it's, it's really cool. Um, this is not really topic of eating seasonally, but I used to get local eggs and man, are they so different, so different yeah. than, you know, um, you know, eggs, not that the, I think the ones from the stores, at least around here, they're still somewhat local, but it, it's just different. I think they're fresher because they're coming directly directly from the yolks are a lot darker there's really dark yolks and you know that you're getting a, a good you know natural egg um we're pretty fortunate we have uh so a lot of people sell eggs around here um the but the farmer's market is like the easiest place to get it yeah yeah, yeah. and then it's also good how else you can support by you know eating local or locally eating seasonally is the if you go to restaurants find out if they're supporting the local farmers and if they're shifting and changing their menus seasonally because it's just gonna taste so much better um in another world i would um have my own bistro you know in another <laughs> lifetime and i've already like planned a whole seasonal menu and that's exactly i would be like okay we'll like get a local supplier and and it would be like soup and paninis and mm -hmm. then of course all of like my baked goods because I like to bake, but that's, that's another lifetime. If I yeah. was a total foodie, but I'm too much, I, I care about uh, my insides too much to eat all of the glory foods. <laughs> yeah. What I love here, for those of you that don't know, I live in Toronto and uh, you know, it's pretty urban here and we all live close together, you know, houses are this close. And, um, but what's really cool is I live near one of the biggest parks in Canada, High Park. I'm like a couple blocks away. So when I walk through the park, they have these gardening plots and it's really nice to see like in the center of the park, all of a sudden they're just da -da -da, and they're just these little plots of gardens and you see people out there with their little umbrellas. They have the whole setup, chairs, umbrellas, and they just tend to their gardens because they Ooh, don't have thing. a yard. You know, these are people that don't have yards and I've seen them. Even there's one in my neighborhood. There's a little community garden, which is really cool. You know, you just don't even know what they are until you walk by and you're like, I didn't even know this was here. So it's super cool. I used to garden, um, not at the house I'm at now, but uh, I find dealing with 
the raccoons and stuff oh, like, yeah. like Toronto is horrible with raccoons. We call them trash pandas here. <laughs> they just eat everything, everything. So, and then, you know, the squirrel, it's just so hard to keep them. I, I have yet to figure that out. So I just, that would be a challenge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So now I just grow herbs in the summer, you know, on, in pots and I'm happy with that because I dry them all. Like I harvest them through the summer. So they still grow. And then, in fact, I have weirdly the last couple of years, my annuals have come back. Sometimes I'd parsley come back last year. And then I have oregano coming out this year. It's like, I haven't even planted yet. <laughs> wow. So, good for you. I kill everything. I, I have a cactus. It's the only thing that I've been able to keep alive. <laughs> uh-huh. My girlfriend bought me a cactus um, when my dog died. And that's the only plant that I have left. <laughs> yeah, I don't have, I don't have any plants. But I can so. grow zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I miss the garden tomatoes. I really do. I used to grow them. I love them. In fact, I think you saw my post. I had just made salsa, uh, roasted yes. salsa, just because I was, was going to say it's salsa. It. Like now is the time to start while well, we usually make our salsa in the summer, right? Yeah, but yeah. I couldn't wait. I was like, and I roasted anyway. I do fresh salsa as well, but I like to, there's a, just a roasted salsa that I love and oh, it's so good. And I had to, I had to make it. So bought tomatoes. I know they weren't in season, but it doesn't matter because everything else that goes in there, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. So let us know, let us know what your favorite in season food is. And if you want to share any amazing recipes, please do so. <laughs> yes. that well, and wild. I have, I will post in the comments. Um, I have two really good sites that you can reference if you want to know what's in season. So I have one for the U S people, because you can go in and populate, put in your state and it'll tell you what's in oh. season for the state and the month. And then there's a Canada one as well. You don't get to put in your province, but it's a Canada wide, but it's a really cute and really nice uh, chart. And you can click on the things and learn more about it. And so I'll post those links in the chat because it, it's super, you know, because I forget sometimes what, you know, what's all in season. So I know like right now it's rhubarb and I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm not a rhubarb person. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't really know what would be in season now. I'm just looking forward. I was like, we should start barbecuing and getting some salads, but I don't know. You have to like, my schedule needs to allow that. <laughs> yeah. So I rely on my soups. <laughs> my <backup. laughs> awesome. Anyways. Yeah. So that was short and sweet and to the point and a little, I don't know. I felt like I was really, calm, really today. calm today. Yeah. <laughs> it's later. Maybe we need to do these later. Cause you're a little more calm, <laughs> a little more calm at the end of the day. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. You'll hear. Okay. When cloud. Oh, am I still? Nope. Hold on.